So what is going on everybody? Fernando Silva here with another video and with all the hoopla of iPadOS 15 releasing to the public and all that good stuff, everybody getting that installed to the new iOS and iPadOS devices, that's been amazing. But lost in translation was the fact that Apple actually just released iPadOS 15.1 beta one. So they actually brought back some features that they released in some of the earlier betas and brought it back to 15.1. Now that's a little bit more stable for the developers to actually test out and try out. But we're gonna be going over some of the changes that I noticed with 15.1 compared to 15.0. But without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so let's hop right into this video, everybody. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is if we go into the images, I always like to take a screenshot of exactly what I'm updating to. So for instance, we have 15.1 developer beta, we have 5.36 gigabytes in order to get this installed. So give yourself around 10 to 11 gigabytes of actual storage left over in order to make sure that this gets installed correctly. And then if we get out of there, what I like to do also is check into the actual version that we have. So 15.1, and now you can see how it's done in the past. We go right back up 19B5042H. So that H is letting us know that we just started with the beta program and we should be going down in letters as the new betas get released. So here we have, like I said, we have the H version 15.1. This is the first beta and we're just gonna continue to go on from there. But the first setting that actually came back with 15.1 is actually SharePlay. So if we go down and we scroll down to actual FaceTime, click on FaceTime, you now see that we have a SharePlay option. So if we click on SharePlay, you now have the toggle there to allow you to turn on SharePlay. We did have SharePlay with betas three through, I believe six, and then Apple actually took away SharePlay because of the fact that this wasn't stable enough, it wasn't ready, but now they're bringing it back on 15.1 for people to try out. And ideally everybody, when it does release 15.1, probably in the next month or so, everybody will be able to take advantage of SharePlay. And for those of you that don't know, SharePlay is just a way to watch content at the same time as somebody else that's not physically with you. So basically you FaceTime somebody, then you turn on Disney Plus or Apple TV or Apple Music, and you can consume that content at the same time in real time with each person, even though you're not in the same physical location. Another thing that I noticed is actually inside of the Safari settings. If you scroll down to this tab section, these actual graphics are actually new. So they were a little bit different in 15.0, but now they're here. And these are mostly for Safari on iPadOS because the settings on iOS for Safari are a little bit different. So these next few features that I'm going to show off are actually all inside of the settings and they don't do too much, but I did want to show them off and show you the differences between 15.0 and 15.1. So the first one is actually in the settings. If you go into your camera and if you scroll all the way down, there's a new about camera and privacy link. So this is a brand new splash screen. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it lets you know what Apple's doing from a camera and privacy standpoint to make sure that, you know, you're not being tracked. They're not taking your video and your images. They're only kind of using them as you would want them to be used and things like that. So overall, that is what this is reading and also lets you know about AR kit and things like that. But that's a new link that was added inside of the actual camera settings. So the next one's actually inside of accessibility. So if you go into settings, go to your accessibility, go to voiceover, there's actually a new description under the quick settings. So quick settings was something that came in earlier or it was a new setting that did come in recently. But here it says quick settings allow you to access voiceover settings at any time, access quick settings with the finger quadruple tap. So it's just another way to access quick settings and it lets you know by a little description, which wasn't there in the past. Another new setting is still under accessibility. So we're still in this menu. And if we go into audio visual, we now have the left and right balancer. So this was here before, but we did get a new little meter, which wasn't there before to let you know and give you a tangible difference as to how much you're actually doing. So if you move this, you can see that the meter turns all the way to number one or to negative one, depending on what you're doing. That little meter was not there before. And then the last big one that I do want to touch on is now we are able to use video. So you can FaceTime, you can video call, you can Zoom call, you can Skype, you can make Microsoft Teams, and you can use it while using a second application. So in the past, if we were to open up something like Zoom, for instance, let's open that up. Let's just start a new meeting, start that meeting. We'll allow this, right? So here you can see that we have a video going on. So whenever we were to open this up and try to pull up a second application, the application would open, but then you would black out the actual video and the video feed would turn you off. So here you can see that we do have Zoom open. We have a multitasking window open with the notes app. You can even grab another application and put it into slide over. So you can do that, move it over, which is nice. So now you can see that Zoom video and other video calling apps, because I tasted this, because I tested this with FaceTime, tested it with Google Hangouts, tested it with Microsoft Teams, and they all seem to work. So 
That's an amazing feature that's finally over to iPad OS 15, 15.1. It took Apple, who knows how many years to actually get this done. You know, it's a feature which should have been around during, especially the peak pandemic days when everybody was video conferencing, especially on their iPad. But those are the differences that I saw. Now I kind of want to check out the actual battery percentage and see how that's been doing over time, especially while dealing with 15.0 in that beta program. So if we go back into our settings, click on battery. Here you can see your last 10 days of screen on time. So last 10 days I have about two and a half hours of screen on time. And again, I like to analyze these days that I did a lot of work on here. So four hours and 10 minutes. And then on a day like Tuesday of last week, eight and a half hours of screen on time with about 125% battery, which means I'm probably gonna get around seven to seven and a half hours on a full charge if I use it correctly. And if I use it to the best of its ability in terms of making sure I'm not using a ton of intensive tasks. And if I do not to use it for too long, but this is the kind of battery life to expect, especially on a brand new M1 iPad Pro. Again, I'm on the beta program, so I've rarely used a public release on my main iPad, but battery life is not meeting those eight to 10 hour standards that Apple gave us in the very beginning when these M1 iPads were released. But that's gonna do it for this view. Let's get out of here and go to the normal view. But that is pretty much gonna do it, everybody. Like you saw, Apple brought back SharePlay and then they added some other things, especially to the iOS side with those vaccination records and the wallet and all those good things. But then they also trickle down some other things inside of the settings to make it a little bit easier to use. Again, we're on a 15.1 update. So Apple, I think they're gonna focus on SharePlay with 15.1. And then maybe with 15.2, they'll address universal control. Cause I saw it nowhere in the code or in the actual developer release notes about universal control. One good thing was that Zoom ability to now, we have the ability to not only use center stage with third party applications, but also be able to use and have a video call while multitasking with, with let's say, something as simple as the notes application. So you can take notes while being on a video chat call versus just being blinded and being kind of blacked out and have the video turned off, even though you're still in that call. But overall, I welcome these 15.1 updates. I'll let you guys know over the next coming days, how stable it is. And if I recommend it, if you guys are on the 15.0 or if you guys are trying to get into the developer program, because that's how we usually do it. Give me about three, four days. We'll do a battery update. And then we'll also do to see how stable it is. And I'll walk through all those bug fixes and performance issues. But that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. Comment below. Are you guys going to install 15.1? I'm always curious to find out. And if you are, are you installing it on a main device? Because you guys know that I always do. But until next time, peace. Oh, and don't forget to check out channel sponsor Paperlike for always supporting the channel and keeping this channel going. But until next time, peace.